So I guess I can say I've been dealing with this ever since... Ever since... 2014. The beginning of 2014. So in the beginning of 2014, that was my second semester of first year university at Ryerson. So that's why I went. I went for business. You know, I thought at that time I had to do something practical if I want to be successful, right? I had to get like a job, like a nine to five job. You know, I wasn't somebody who I believed in dreams. But when I graduated from high school, I stopped, right? right, And I just thought, hey, if I actually really want to make something of myself, I got, I got to go to university, get a degree, and get a 9 5 job, and just do that until, you know, you die. Because before that, I was a, I'm a dreamer. Like, I've always been a dreamer. I've always been somebody who not only dreamed, but, like, worked towards my dreams. But I've also been that guy to always quit on what I'm working on. When I was younger, starting like in grade 5, grade 4, I was athletic. Like I, 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 elementary, so grade, ever since elementary actually, I just knew I was athletic. And that was like my first love after gaming, right? Gaming wasn't something I pursued as a career, but athletics was something, you know, track and field, to be specific, was something I wanted to pursue. I actually wanted to run the Olympics. And then, you know, as I grew up, you know, went to middle school, that was the first time I actually experienced anything Olympic-like, as in track meets, right? Going, having a coach, actually doing, like, stuff like hurdles, triple jump. Because as a kid, all I knew was running. It's all I knew, running, and I just knew like sports that involved balls, like soccer, football, basketball, baseball. But middle school is when I really experienced like track and field, you know, like actual track and field. Meets, 100 meter, 200 meter, relays, traveling to Ottawa and, and whatnot. Well, traveling to Ottawa, no, not Ottawa, London, Ontario for the, the, the provincial championships. That's when I was in grade nine, actually. But track and field was like my first passion that I wanted to pursue as a career. And, you know, grade nine was my last complete year of track and field. And that year, I remember we were doing the relay, we made it to the championships, we went to London, we were in a hotel. I was, I was like freaking what, 13 years old. I was like, yo, this is so sick. Like, I'm like, I'm traveling, like, like, it, it's, it was just so cool, you know, because the furthest I would travel would be like downtown to like University of Toronto or something, right? But then going to London, I was like, yo, like we're on a bus and shit, and like I had my friends, my relay team, and it was just like us four, and just uh, like I had money, like they gave us some money and stuff to like buy whatever you want. And, like I remember I bought like I, all I would eat is Pizza Hut, cause I've always been a Pizza Hut fan since like for like damn near ten years, you know, and. And I remember uh, when we hit the relay, when the relay came, you know, I'm just there, I'm, I'm in my position. I was the third runner, so I was a runner right before the last, you know. And I, I remember so vividly, I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Why did I, like, I did not know, like, oh. There's, when you're, in, when you're standing in the relay, Okay, when you're standing in the relay, there's when you're waiting to get the baton, there's a certain line you cannot cross. And I literally started at the line that you're not supposed to cross. And the official was like, hey, you're too close. You probably want to back up. I said, no, it's okay. This is what we do. But I really did not realize I was actually at the line that I was crossing. So literally, once I got the baton and I took a step, phew, they shot the gun, disqualified. My team was pissed at me for pretty much the entire trip. And that was like my first real sense of failure, which is my biggest fear. Literally, I literally the next year I tried track and field again. I switched schools, right? I switched high schools, and that was the year I quit track. 
I did one meet and I quit track. I just said forget it and I never did track and field again. I switched over to music, right? Some of you guys will know I have a music channel. Just type in my name. Uh, you'll find all my music, my music piano covers, some of my performances. That again was even more, that was something I even wanted to pursue, pursue more than track and field, right? That was something I actually thought would be my career. I actually wanted to become a music teacher. I remember like, ah, oh, just thinking back, like it's just so, I, I remember I performed at Carabana, even though it wasn't for, you know, a piano, I did it for Steel Pan, which was a big part of my life too, playing the Steel Pans and, and it was a big part of my life and a, and a pretty sad part of my life because it came to a point where I just did not want to do Steel Pan anymore, but that's a whole other story. Uh, I just want to talk about, you know, I'm leading up to, to where I'm at right now. And, you know, I remember I went, I played at a hotel. Like, I remember going to some hotel and playing at some, like, open, open mic show type thingy. And I remember just being on stage and every time I performed prior, I never messed up. I never actually messed up. I was just, I was really good on the piano, right? But then when I performed that night, I messed up so bad. Like that embarrassing feeling where your body temperature just increases. Like it feels like you're, you're 100 plus, you're 200 degrees or something like that, you know? But I still made it to the second show, you know, as one of the young, the young stars. And that second show, that video was actually on my other YouTube channel, if you guys want to go see. Uh, damn, I don't remember what the performance was called. Uh, I'll probably post a link in the description, if anything. And, you know, I remember performing at two weddings. I remember performing at my first, the first wedding. I got paid $200 for one hour. That, like, you know, like, I, I remember when I started off playing piano, I just started off in my room. I literally started off in my room just watching YouTube videos and watching David Sides play piano covers and I would just mimic him to the point where I was able to create my own covers. And then to see how, you know, I went as far as, you know, playing at the Toronto Convention Center on some piano, right? And people were watching me and I got an inv invitation to play at a, a woman's wedding, right? And I got paid $200 for that. Like, like I was seeing success and I, that's when I was so confident in myself. I kept going, right? I just kept going. And then at that wedding, I got an invitation to play at another wedding. And I played at that wedding the same year, right? Like literally three months, three months later, and like I got paid like a hundred dollars for that hour. And I literally bought my first phone with that money. My first phone was because I was playing the piano. And then you know I tried to do classical training. I took you know theory tests and history tests and whatnot. I totally bombed the history test right past the theory test I passed with like a 80 plus theory test I, I walked out the theory test right when I was allowed to they only get like you have to be in there for 30 minutes before you walk in, before you're allowed to walk out I literally walked out at that 30 minute mark like with my head down I couldn't even look the person in the eye when I hand over my exam I, I just knew I failed I knew nothing about music history and when I say music history I mean like Mozart and Beethoven that did not interest me at all and the reason why I was doing that is because I want to become a music teacher and to become a music teacher you have to have some t certain type of you know skill and music theory uh, 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 knowledge and background to be accepted into music at like York University which is where I want to go and even even if I'm mistaken and you didn't even need that Eventually, I would have needed that anyways. I, I would need to know music history and whatnot if I wanted to teach music, but I didn't want to know music history, and I knew I was going to get past it. So I dropped out of music, and that was my second failure. That was the second thing I quit on. So then it leads me back up to Ryerson.